Welcome again to DEI Matters, Conversations with Margaret Credo Thomas. This is a new avenue as a community to have thoughtful and meaningful conversations about diversity, equity, inclusion, and anti-racism. Today, our guest is Rochelle Smith, and Rochelle is the new MECO Director for Arlington Public Schools. Welcome, Rochelle. I thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. This is great. Thank you. You're welcome. So my first question for you is, you're the new director of the MECO program. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what role led you to Arlington? Wow. Okay, so that's a, that's a good question. Um, so let's say I am a MECO alum. I am also a current MECO parent and a former MECO parent as well. So I had a student that participated in the program up until 10th grade and then transferred. Um, and we can talk about that later. Um, but yeah, so I am all entrenched in MECO. Uh, and so my journey with Arlington and MECO, so the com combination is I um, decided to go back to school. So I decided mm. to go back to school and be an adult learner. So I went to Simmons University. Woo -woo. Simmons, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got to represent. <laughs> and um, I decided to take up social work. I had been working in homeless services mm. and really found myself doing a lot of that social work there, mm -hmm. um, case management and so forth. So I was like, I'm just going to go back full time. Mm -hmm. And so I did that. And that was a huge, huge, like, risk for me to do mm -hmm. because I have a family and I was mm. like oh I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this but they were like you gotta come full-time I don't think work is gonna be an option mm -hmm. cool mm -hmm. so I get into Simmons and people get placed you know they're getting placements and in August I'm sitting in class and they're like where are you going I'm like I don't know what are you talking about and mm -hmm. they're like you're supposed to have your placement mm. so I uh, went into the field office and I'm like, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this. Mm -hmm. And one of the things was I said I didn't want to work with youth. Mm -hmm. So she's like, I have no idea where I'm going to put you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, let's figure this out. And at the time I was taking Dynamics of Racism and Oppression. Mm -hmm. And I was writing a paper on MECO. Mm -hmm. And I found so much passion in writing that paper that I said, what about MECO? And she was like, well, you said you don't want to work with kids. And I said, but... I like Mecco, mm -hmm. so let me try. Mm -hmm. So she goes, okay. So I get an interview with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the rest is history. Um, no, yeah, and so I get hired, so excited about that, and I start working with you, and I start getting to see not only the macro pieces, but the mezzo and the micro, and I'm like, this is great. So I had a wonderful experience, uh, not just saying that because we're on your lovely show, <laughs> but I had a wonderful experience as an, an intern mm -hmm. and then being asked to come back to Arlington, mm -hmm. even though I had to take another internship in a different school district, mm -hmm. um, I got to work behind the scenes doing like a community partner outreach coordinator, um, and then also, and that's working, you know, that was working with, um, in the social and emotional learning department. Mm -hmm. And then I also was a um, advisor, well, I'm still advise, advisor for the Black Student Union at the high school. So I still had these connections. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when this position came up, I was like, wow, let me, let me try. You know, I had some encouragement along the way and, and. When I got that call, I was like, it was a no-brainer. Yeah. Definitely had yeah. to come here. So Yeah, when you, um, so I remember our interview, um, and when you started, you were very clear with me that you wanted to learn about the macro and <laughs> micro level, yeah. and that you were taking urban leadership at the time. Absolutely. Um, yep. And so there was a lot that you were learning from ur urban leadership, and you wanted to learn more about systems. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to add that. Thank to, you. That I know I did forget of, that part. That, yeah. Yes. So, um, and that um, you did so well that even I was like, can you come back <laughs> for the next year? Um, because you made a lot of connections with the families yes. and with the students. With the students. And, so, and the community. And the community. Yeah. And so it seems like a no brainer that you would now be stepping into a role that I had. <laughs> yes. Right. And it's um, so you're now been in Arlington as a director. As a director for a for couple three, of months. For three right? months. Yeah, three months. So 
I, I, I don't want to assume that anybody really knows what the MECO program is. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what the program Absolutely. is? Absolutely. We can have that type of conversation because I can go back and forth with right. you about that. Yeah. So uh, the program to me um, overall is when I think of, I always give one word and that's opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right. And so um, I know how it started out. Um, it started out as a as an as an opportunity, like one sided almost, mm -hmm. you know, in a sense that it was an opportunity for uh, students from the Boston area to come out to suburban neighborhoods to get what we call a better education. Mm -hmm. Because at the time, the education was not good for black and brown or people of color, mm -hmm. but primarily black people. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've seen the transition being a Mecco parent and then, you know, a Mecco alum, I've seen the transition and I like it. It's it's an integration program mm -hmm. now. So now we're not just bringing these students in for a different type of education, but you're also bringing some value into these mm -hmm. communities with these students that become Mecco directors, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. become city councilors, mm -hmm. that become acting mayors, that right. become NBA superstars, right. you know? So, right. you know, it's it's a beneficial mm -hmm. situation on each, mm -hmm. each front. Um, and so this program um, changed my life, it's changed my children's lives, mm -hmm. um, and I see that it's changed friends' lives. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm so excited to see how it's gonna help to change trajectories mm -hmm. and tra transition the students' lives that we have now. There's 72 students in the program, mm -hmm. and I'm super excited to see how that will um, transition as well. So this program is, is to me, another family dynamic. Yeah. Yes. Did you, I mean, MECO has been around since 1966, 1966. Right? Did you ever imagine that Me the MECO program would still be around, that we would still need a MECO program? I guess that's the question, that we would still need a MECO program to, um, you know, it, we all know that it's a state law, right? right, the Racial Imbalance Act, but we would still need a, um, a program to diversify education. Did you, did, did you ever think that MECO would be around this long for your children? I, so... Yes and no. I was clear that I, when, if, when, whenever I had children, they would be a part of the MECO program, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so I really, I think at the time, at being a young mom, I didn't really understand that it, it was a good and a bad thing mm -hmm. that it had to still be around. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, it's good that it's still around so mm -hmm. that students are able to, and these communities are able to, to get this mm -hmm. opportunity, but mm -hmm. it's sad that it has to mm -hmm. still e exist because mm -hmm. we are still so segregated mm -hmm. um, in communities. Um, and you just look at even from where our students are coming from the city mm -hmm. of Boston, it's very much segregated. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's like, yikes, you mm -hmm. know, this still has to exist. And then it's also like, well, yeah, I'm glad that it, does still yeah. exist because the you know the opportunities that may not present themselves in that urban space um, do kind of present themselves in these in these suburban neighborhoods because of the resources mm -hmm. um, that are allocated. Yeah, 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 yeah. I always think like Mecco is still around, and I you know like you said, um, people have wonderful experiences and friendships. Yeah, that have come out of the Mecco program. It's like people who have been friends since kindergarten are yes. still friends to this day and we their network. children now are, are friends and I look at Mecco as um, a legacy yes. right you have sometimes third or fourth generation that have gone through yeah, the Mecco program second generation. yeah yeah my yeah. mom was a Mecco student mm -hmm. um, she didn't stay in the program all the way to graduation mm -hmm. but she was um, a part of I believe Marblehead she was mm. yeah she was a Marblehead student yeah 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 my sister was part of the MECO program um, and when I got called into the MECO program it was high school so my mom thought you are already yeah. kind of have a foundation where you're at and you're you know you have a community where you're at so that's I'm always been on the other side, so I've never been the right. student. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've always been the one working on that side. So, yeah. um, as we're talking about Mecco, can you can you tell me some of the things that you appreciate about the program? Absolutely. So I 
one, I appreciate the program overall. Um, what I also, I, I, I think that, and I'm hoping that we get back to this, but in the past that um, we were really, the students were really connected to not only the district, but the MECO like entity itself, right? And I believe that that is happening with, um, you know, certain districts. But I remember being able to go to the MECO office, uh, you know, for tutoring or whatever it is, you know, so we got to know other districts, right? Mm -hmm. So we were able to, oh, mm -hmm. there goes Lexington, there goes mm -hmm. this one. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully we can get back to that, mm -hmm. right? Um, but but the, 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 the big thing that I appreciate about this program are the friendships that I build mm -hmm. and the connections that I build. Mm -hmm. And one of the connections that I can just like, really remember distinctively remember is when i was working in homeless services i had a a, a, um, a client come in we call them guests at the time mm -hmm. so i had a guest come in who was elderly mm -hmm. and i was like we cannot have her stay in this shelter like mm -hmm. she it just wouldn't work mm -hmm. and i remember calling up a housing agency and talking to this person and them saying hey i'm going to refer you to someone mm -hmm. I said okay so i talked to this person and great guy somehow he had some kind of housing establishment in, in Framingham. I was like, okay. So he goes, do you know about Framingham? Well, I said, well, it's kind of close to Newton. And I was a Newton alum, mm -hmm. Newton graduate. Mm -hmm. So he goes, what do you know about Newton? We'll come to find out we both graduated from Newton North mm -hmm. High School. Now he graduated probably like 30 years before I did. Mm -hmm. But he was like, you know what? You know we stay together. Right. And so we were able to, I was able to house this, mm -hmm. this individual, this client, um, Within two days, that was mm. quick. So I did social work stuff too, right? right? So that was a really quick thing, but it was that connection. Mm -hmm. Now, had I not gone to Newton North, I probably wouldn't have that connection. Right. And then I probably would have been, it would have been slower to house this person. But because we have that connection, mm -hmm. so that's what that program brings. Mm -hmm. It brings a connection. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go around and you tell people we, what high school you went to or whatever. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah. yeah. And you, yeah. you know, you hear about those things. Yeah. You hear people. And you really like you connect so yeah. um that is like the the biggest thing that i that's my take from uh being a part of program and what i can appreciate are those connections and it also happens on the other side when you work for the program right they're like wait you work for because that happens to me um and i've worked in different districts um previous years um you said something that resonated with me and i wanted to kind of unpack that a little bit sure. more because you said that um, when you were in the MECO program that you were able to establish relationships with students in other districts and other programs yes. and it seems like that is not happening anymore and um, let's unpack like maybe why that's not un unhappening and what are some maybe creative ideas that we can start to talk about the intersection yeah. of these different districts to kind of come together because they're all having the same experience right yes they're all leaving their homes at a certain time they're all p being on a bus to go somewhere else to go to school so yeah. they're all having that they know that experience in that community so um, what do you think is, is is has happened that that kind of connection of different communities of districts are not happening anymore I think there was a common goal back then, and the common goal was we're bringing some of the best of the best out to your schools mm -hmm. to get this opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. And because of the transition of how that looks now, um, as far as integrating the schools, um, I think everybody has their own way of doing things. Mm -hmm. So I think now it's like di districts are kind of like, oh, well, we're kind of doing this. And then you have, you know, this other district where well, we're doing this. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't allow for the directors to really come together to mm -hmm. say, hey, how can we, you know, let's, because you're always putting out fires or mm -hmm. there's always something going mm -hmm. on. Um, so, like, how can we come together? Let's do a mm -hmm. big dance. And I think mm -hmm. COVID definitely, you know, changes situations and I don't know if previously you know I think you got with some districts and mm -hmm. kind of did apple picking and so yeah, forth yeah um, I think we had like dances there mm -hmm. were things going on at MECO headquarters mm -hmm. that brought us together so mm -hmm. they would have um, awards mm -hmm. and certain things and mm -hmm. you'd be like oh 
show. So I don't know how, but I have Lincoln Sudbury friends mm -hmm. because we went to dances together. Like mm -hmm. we, there were certain things that we, we, we connected with. So mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm hopeful that after this pandemic kind of just goes away, mm -hmm. that maybe that can start to happen, especially since we have a new little uh, establishment down mm -hmm. in my hometown, Roxbury. <laughs> I represent very well. Uh, and so maybe we can start doing some things like that to bring to bring our district students together. Yeah. 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 You mentioned um, being a MECO director and putting out fires. Yeah. So let's talk about that a little <laughs> bit, right? Because both of us can have that discussion. Um, I guess my first question is, do you really think people understand what the day to day that you do in being a director of, of a program no because i i've been asked like well what what do you do you mm -hmm. know um and i honestly can't give it a real description mm -hmm. of what i do because mm -hmm. it's pretty much everything i do what you do mm -hmm. i do what you do mm -hmm. um and it's you know it's just a combination of so many things and it can change at any given moment mm -hmm. um starting from the bus i turn well I turn my phone up because I don't even turn it off now. I turn my phone up at 530 mm -hmm. because my first bus stop is at 630. Mm -hmm. And that means I may have to listen, hear from the bus driver that mm -hmm. may say he's late or the bus company that mm -hmm. may say, hey, a bus is down mm -hmm. or the bus monitor say I'm not feeling well. Mm -hmm. So I have to turn my phone on at 530. Yep. People don't understand yeah. that your day starts before you even leave your house. And I have a MECO student at home who wakes up at 5.30. Right. So there's times that I may be preparing lunch mm -hmm. and I'm navigating right. the bus right. and so forth because, you know, hey, it didn't come yet. Something's right. going on. Um, and then I believe during, so when I get in, you know, there may be some issue. Like I one, one day I came in and, you know, one of the students called and was like, I left my stuff on the bus. Mm -hmm. And then come to find out, like, at least five of them left something on mm -hmm. the bus. So it was like contacting the bus mm -hmm. company. Hey, can we get this stuff? Mm -hmm. And, you know, luckily it was the Arlington bus company. So they were able <laughs> to just bring it upstairs. Right. It was the other one. Right. And, you know, right. that would have been a whole different right. story. And right. then throughout the day, you get a lot of emails. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff going on because we have K through 12. Mm -hmm. So during the day, there's a lot of stuff going on with the students. Mm -hmm. It may be grades it may be attendance it may be behavior mm -hmm. it may be it could be praises at mm -hmm. some point like mm -hmm. things are looking better mm -hmm. you know iep meetings mm -hmm. um sst meetings mm -hmm. just some kind of meeting um yeah. that you're doing and so i'm running from school to school mm -hmm. um i don't i don't stay put mm -hmm. one place like today i went to Pierce. Mm -hmm. I also went to Audison because mm -hmm. we rock our Mecco t-shirts yeah. on the first Friday yeah. of every month. Yeah. Shout out to Brian Merringer and his hey. crew for that. Um, yeah, so. Which I'm going to get in on because you just please. told me. Yes, because yeah. we yes. take pictures. So yes. we took pictures with the students. Mm -hmm. We called them, hey, let's yeah. come and take some pictures. Yeah. And so they liked that. It was mm -hmm. nice. But I'm moving around a lot, like a lot. I used to, <laughs> I used to, call it i'm on roller skates it used to be like what are you doing i'm on roller skates and then yes. i changed it to the hoverboard <laughs> i was like yeah i'm on the hoverboard today it's like you said you're in and out of your car yes. you're at this meeting yes. um you mentioned sst just for the audience yes. that student support team meeting yes. or you're at a special educational meeting yes. um, for a student and their family um i remember a director years ago um did a presentation for the the superintendent and she had all these gift boxes and they were all named something different of what we did oh it was all like um nurse um friend yep. <laughs> advocate, advocate right absolutely um sometimes you're you know um whatever it was like there were like 20 boxes yep. and all of those boxes were real real stuff they were real and so and then sometimes when you get home right some people they their day might end at four. Does your day end at four? My, my day does not end at four. So my day should typically end at the last bus stop. Mm -hmm. um, but there's sometimes, you know, either students are being picked up late or something's happened. Mm -hmm. The bus gets into pockets of traffic. Mm -hmm. There's times I've either had to pull over on the side of the road mm -hmm. um, and text families mm -hmm. in the big group mm -hmm. text to say, hey, the bus this is 10 minutes late, late yeah. 15 minutes late. Um, cause otherwise that phone will blow up. And yes. then there's times that may have something happened on the bus. Maybe a student accidentally got hit or mm -hmm. a book bag. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody ripped a book bag, mm -hmm. like, you know, just yeah. playing horsing around. Yeah. And so, you know, families 
I have to be a mediator mm -hmm. and, you know, hey, do you guys want to talk? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll talk. All right, perfect. Yeah. You know, and then something may have happened that they didn't tell me throughout right. the day. So right. then there's a parent calling and maybe upset, maybe right. anything. Right. Right. Yeah, so. <laughs> um, so can you tell me, you know, you told me what you appreciate. Can you tell me what are some of the wins that you've had since you've been in here as the director for three months? Ooh. Um, so some of the wins have been one, creating relationships. I think I have some, I think I've started to create some amazing relationships with um, principals um, where I can kind of go to them and talk to them. And like we have these real conversations. I think also the relationship establishment with the students as well. Like they are like the primary, the most important piece to this. Um, without them, there's no program. Mm -hmm. um, so just establishing those relationships and it's been it's been great doing it but it's also hard because i'm i'm running mm -hmm. back and forth mm -hmm. um the other piece is um, a big win is being able to have my student meetings with them mm -hmm. and the family meetings mm -hmm. so being able to do that and um i started out doing those on a saturday we have one coming up on mm -hmm. saturday mm -hmm. we're trying to switch it up because we have families that do things on saturdays mm -hmm. that can't be a part of so i want to switch it up mm -hmm. um but just having that and i'm looking forward to really bringing in like some guest speakers um I love Wyatt Jackson. I shout um, him out all yes, the time. Wyatt's great. He is an educator, um, has his own show on PBS. Yeah. And um, I think that moving the body is so important. Yeah. And so he does these great things with that. So bringing him mm -hmm. in and really just bringing in some more support. So mm -hmm. I think overall making it to where I am right now is a huge win because mm -hmm. it was really rocky <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the beginning, you just you're just trying to get your footing, yes. you're trying to understand everything. Why it's great. Why it came a couple of years ago, work um, did some circles with, See, yeah, uh, with the middle school and the students loved him. Absolutely. Um so what are some of the challenges? You know, those some of the wins. What are some of the challenges that you you think you you know, you've been facing um but and you and you've been overcoming. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think one of the challenges is people not really understanding what the program is. Um, and so you'll get maybe that old way of thinking that, oh, these poor children are coming mm -hmm. out here or mm -hmm. these children are coming out here and sucking up all our resources mm -hmm. or these children are coming out here and messing up things. Mm -hmm. And even though people may not say it verbally, mm -hmm. you, I'm a social worker. Mm -hmm. And I'm a feeler, so mm -hmm. I can feel things. Mm -hmm. um, and do I think that that's an ill intent? Absolutely not. I just mm -hmm. think it's a misunderstanding of mm -hmm. what the program is. So what I've been doing um, to get through these challenges is going to the different schools and mm -hmm. explaining the program. Mm -hmm. But I'm not giving them the surface level, like, this is what this is and this is that. Mm -hmm. I'm actually incorporating my experiences, mm -hmm. my experience as a mom, my mm -hmm. experience as the director, and mm -hmm. my experience as, a, as an alum. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving those real life scenarios. I mm -hmm. give them a day in a life of what it looks like for a MECO student mm -hmm. to wake up at 5.30 in the morning, mm -hmm. to have to get at the bus stop at 6.30. I mean, you have to leave your house about what, 6.15 right. or so? Depending um, on where you live in the city. Depending yeah. on where you live and get into the bus stop and then riding that long bus ride and your school, you, it's not your only school that's right. on that route. You right. may be the last school. My right. daughter's the last school to right. get off. So right. she's on the bus for over an hour. Mm. Um, so you're already exhausted sometimes mm. coming into school. You're hungry, mm -hmm. you know. So those are the challenges that I think we'll be able to overcome mm -hmm. as we start being more realistic about what this program mm -hmm. is and what it can bring. Mm -hmm. And I talk to, you know, faculty now about, you know, you can have bragging rights because mm -hmm. you may just have the next Tito Jackson. Mm -hmm. You may just have mm -hmm. the next Kim Janey. You may have the next Bruce Brown. Mm -hmm. I believe Bruce Brown was Wakefield, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. But, you know, so you may have these students mm -hmm. sitting right here. Right. I also talk about my, because I think the challenges is, too, that as students of color, you're different, right? Mm -hmm. And we all know that race is a social construct. It's mm -hmm. not real. Right. It's not real. Right. There's only one race, and that's right. the human race. You're but right. we still operate in this kind of sectional type of yeah. understanding yeah. of differences. So, yeah. you know, just help, helping people to understand these students are human, mm -hmm. and they're just the same, and they're Arlington Public School yeah. students. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's a challenge, but I also see some 
some change manifesting because I've had people come up to me and say thank you so much for that presentation mm -hmm. bringing that real life experience mm -hmm. kind of puts it into context mm -hmm. for me I've never had it that way so I appreciate that and I'm mm -hmm. like well I can give it because I lived it so right. I have the lived experience right. of it and I'm living it so right. you can see what that looks like and I tell them I'm like don't feel sorry for them right because this is a voluntary keep, program. Keep your, keep your expectations. Absolutely. Yes. But mm -hmm. just have some empathy and some compassion yeah. and understanding. Now, yeah. if your student comes in, their stomach may be grumbling. Yeah. And they may want to eat. And they did yes. have breakfast in the yes. morning. But yes. it's been two hours. Right. Right. <laughs> I need a snack. Right. It's like us. <laughs> yeah. Coffee break. Or I need my tea. Or let me go get some cookies. Absolutely. Or let me eat my apple. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, you and I have known each other now. We're going on three, <laughs> three, three years. I know, um, three. <laughs> and so let's talk about our relationship. Absolutely. Um, and I think when you first interviewed, our interview went for over an hour. <laughs> like we it just, was at a Starbucks. It was at a Starbucks. <laughs> it was at a Starbucks. And we really started to kind of talk, and you really opened up about where you wanted to be, mm -hmm. um, the reason why you went back to school. Yes. And we found out, like, because Simmons is my alum, right? I have my master's of social work from Simmons. Yes. So um, <laughs> let's talk about, like, what does this feel like? We switched roles. Oh, my gosh. Right? You <laughs> now are not, you're not, you know, my student intern. Yeah. Now you're the director of the program. Yes. Like, we're sitting at the same tables yes. together. What does that feel like? You know, it. It's so hard for me to be proud of myself. I have to be real about that. Like, I've never really been able to bask in that. Mm. So I have been trying to be intentional about celebrating that, mm. even if that's even a Facebook post so everybody else can kind of, like, pump me up mm -hmm. and I can be like, okay, you are all the right. I got this. Mm -hmm. It feels magical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so prior to I was telling you this um, during the interview, I had um, I have a master's in management, mm -hmm. so I have a master's in management from Eastern Nazarene College, um, and a lot of concepts that we learned about in social work, we mm -hmm. actually learned about those. So I have a background in HR, ethical mm -hmm. leadership, mm -hmm. um, business law, and so um, I was trying to get ahead. You know, mm -hmm. I was trying to I was working too mm -hmm. hard, and I wasn't being recognized for that, mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't working hard. To be recognized mm -hmm. i was working hard for those those clients that i was mm -hmm. working with mm -hmm. but when i looked to climb that ladder it didn't happen mm -hmm. um and it was devastating mm -hmm. uh so that's when i had to i was like i gotta reinvent myself i gotta figure this out mm -hmm. and i'm a i love school so that's why simmons mm -hmm. became it and and so i remember writing on my twitter handle future program director mm -hmm. i never thought i'd be sitting in the seat mm -hmm. though <laughs> But I, I do remember that, right, in future program director because it's something that I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I looked back, and as I was changing my Twitter handle, I wrote mm -hmm. program director. Mm -hmm. And that hit me. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. But I got into a place and a space and with people that recognized mm -hmm. my, my strengths, mm -hmm. um, my abilities, mm -hmm. um, my possibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was you. You mm -hmm. definitely... One of them, I think Arlington community in mm -hmm. general embraced me, loved me, mm -hmm. and was like, yeah, mm -hmm. you're it. Um, <laughs> and I felt that, and mm -hmm. I had never felt that before. Mm -hmm. So it's still kind of foreign to me. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it, mm -hmm. but sometimes I'll sink in like, ooh, mm -hmm. I don't know. And I think I did even say today, I'm not yet walking in my authority mm -hmm. yet. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. yet walking in there because it's unfamiliar mm -hmm. territory. It's mm -hmm. uncharted for me. Yes. Um, but I appreciate it. Yeah. And I'm happy to be here. Yeah, you're doing, <laughs> you're doing a great job. I'm so proud of you. Thank I'm you. I'm like, wow, you know, just to see you in that seat and to know where you, you know, where you come from and that, you know, you could take my seat over. And I'm so I proud of you. I had a great mentor. <laughs> Listen. I'm so proud that you could, could, could do that. And I think you said something that I just want the community to know. I think it's really important to let people know, yeah. especially in this time when we've had a pandemic, just to let people know, Absolutely. like, you're doing a great job. I see you. Thank you for this small act that you've done um, I don't think a lot of that um, happens yeah. you know we just it's like it's you like just, you're supposed to you're supposed right. to and it's sometimes it's, it's okay to say to somebody you 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 know that was great yeah whether it's a presentation whether it's just that student interaction that you saw with somebody yeah and that helps somebody to continue to build their, their confidence 
in the new position that they have. And so I'm going to tell you publicly <laughs> that you are actually doing, she's doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Thank you. After three months, um, I, sometimes I, I don't feel like I'm needed, which is fine. No, you are. <laughs> <laughs> which is fine because I think you, you have a great handle on a lot of things. So I think the way we kind of talk now is, you know, you just, you're really just talking about like, I'm thinking about this. How does this work? Yeah. And so I, I, I appreciate the conversations that we're having yes, um, and that I can I can pour my knowledge yes. into you. Yes. So I wanted to say that publicly. Thank you. Um, so I want to thank you for just being on today's show with me. Um, I feel like I, a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate that you took the time out to do this today and just to share your story and your love. From Mecco because Absolutely. I really believe you do love Mecco. Oh, I love it. You've been a student. You've been the you're I a wasn't parent. the best student. Well, okay. <laughs> parent, and now you're a director of a program for yes. Mecco. So that says a lot, you know. Um, so again, thank you. This is Rochelle Smith. She is the new Mecco director for Arlington Public Schools. I thank you for joining us for DEI Matters Conversations with Margaret Credo Thomas. And I hope to be visiting with you again soon. Thank you.